So the National Cervical Cancer Coalition has been around since 1996, and it was founded by Alan Kay, who owned a pathology lab that did pap testing. And he found that there was no organization that supported cervical cancer survivors. We really are supported mainly by small donors. It's a grassroots nonprofit organization. You know, cervical cancer doesn't affect as many people as breast cancer does. In the United States, 11,000 women are diagnosed with cervical cancer, and 4,000 women die of cervical cancer every year. The deaths of those women could be prevented if caught early. Not only can we prevent deaths of cervical cancer, but we can prevent the pain and suffering of you know, thousands of women who have to deal with the treatment of cervical cancer. That's our goal, is to eliminate that. Nobody in the United States should die from cervical cancer. This January is Cervical Health Awareness Month. Our organization worked very hard to make that um, a nationally recognized month. We're very proud of that. We are going to work hard to raise awareness. We have posters that we've distributed to college campuses coffee houses and gyms. We've had over 1,800 requests for posters already. That's a huge number to be out in the community reminding people to get vaccinated if appropriate, get their pap test, to get the HPV test if their doctor recommends it. We are really excited about getting that message off. I would bet that there are more women scheduled to get their pap test in January than any other month. <laughs>the predominant cancer-causing HPV types, HPV 16 and 18, protect against uh, uh, or cause approximately 70% of cervical cancers. They are given in a series, uh, three injections um, over six months. Uh, they're recommended to be used between the ages of 9 and 26, 27. Um, we prefer that they be given to younger girls before uh, sexual debut, generally 11 and 12 year olds. In fact, 11 and 12 year olds get a platform of, of, of uh, standard immunizations and the CDC and the government and all these groups, the pediatricians, the OBGYN doctors have recommended that this be integrated into that 11 and 12 year old platform. the things that the organization really promotes, especially in January, is, you know, get your pap test. So you get your pap test regularly. Cervical cancer screening consists of two tests, both the pap test as well as an HPV test. We can test for the virus right from the cervix, okay? It's done with a swab or it can be collected from the liquid pap test. Some pap tests are collected in a liquid. Who should get a pap test? Well, the recent recommendations is that they begin at the age of 21. Because the vaccines do not prevent all HPV infections, it's recommended that cervical cancer screening continues even after vaccination. So personally, I'm concerned that although these vaccines are very powerful and very safe, that the woman might come to the false conclusion that because she's been vaccinated, she doesn't need to be screened anymore and that could be dangerous. So my recommendation is get vaccinated, yes, and yes, continue to be screened. I think that it'd be nice that people are, are so ready to make their pap test, they call and the offices are busy, you know, because there are so many people requesting to go in and have their exam. I think we have more awareness now than we've probably ever had, so it's very exciting. And I think that we'll see the numbers of cervical cancer uh, diagnoses and deaths in this country go down and every one counts. If I hadn't had the HPV test and I hadn't pursued it and gone in and had my colposcopy, I probably would have had cervical cancer because I had a high risk 
HPV, which can be very aggressive. Who should get an HPV test? Every woman over the age of 30. So if you're listening to this and you're over the age of 30, you should know two things what your pap test shows and what your HPV status is. And if you are both negative for HPV and have a normal pap test, the recommendation is that you not be screened again for at least three years because it takes time, remember, to get the virus, to get precancer, and to get into trouble. So if you have a negative HPV test today and you get the virus tomorrow, when you're rescreened in three years, it'll still be okay because three years isn't long enough to get into trouble. So again, if you're over the age of 30, you should be tested for the virus. And I feel passionate about it because I feel that it saved my life. I feel that my early detection saved my life. Empowering young women is personally pretty important to me. I have three daughters so who are all um, college or just recently college age so I think that empowering young women to be advocates to be advocates for their own health to be advocates in the community for things that are important to them is really important and one of the things the Cervical Cancer Coalition has done is reached out to sororities and we produced a toolkit so that they can take this toolkit and go into their community and it gives them everything they might need to give accurate information. And we now have 17 chapters across the United States and they can also partner with our chapter leaders in those communities. One of the things that inspires me most about cervical cancer patients and the women uh, that volunteer for this organization is the passion that they have to prevent other people from having to go through what they went through. We just lost a, 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 a woman to cervical cancer in November and she had four children under the age of six. She, you know, she had a lot of faith and she had, um, she had her children and her family and she said to me, don't stop the fight. And um, when you see that, you just, it really is, uh, it affects you. That woman didn't have to die, and those children lost their mom. Nobody in the United States should die from cervical cancer.